I received the package from Stuart Models this week. It took just uh, about eight days from the time I had ordered it, which was pretty quick considering it came all the way from the UK. Uh, in the outer box, which I've tossed, there was a copy of the invoice and a white box here that presumably contains uh, all the parts of the model. So let's see what's inside. Uh, first thing, we've got uh, a brochure here for the Stuart Models stationary steam engine. So general, identify all parts, make sure that none are missing. On final assembly, grease should be used sparingly on all mating services fitted with gaskets. The numerical sequence of the figures is intended as a guide to assembly. And we've got it in English, German, and French. On the back, we've got a uh, detailed parts list with item numbers. I assume those will be keyed to the assembly drawing. Their part number for it, in case you need to order replacement parts. A brief description what material it's made out of. These are a combination of cast iron, brass, mild steel, stainless steel, more brass, uh, some miscellaneous stuff for the cylinder lagging and gland packing, and uh, the hardware is brass and mostly mild steel. And they have some size information to help identify it and the quantity that are supposed to be included. Uh, opening this up, uh, here we have the assembly instructions and a complete drawing of the uh, exploited assembly drawing of the model. Again, the instructions in three languages and a list of additional parts that might be needed like oil cups and drain cocks, a reverse gear if you want it reversible, various bits and pieces that are available. They note the book, Building a Vertical Steam Engine. I had actually purchased that a couple of years ago when I was first interested in this project and realized that at the time I didn't have the skills to do it, but I think I do now. So that's what we'll be finding out during these videos. And open it up. We've got, uh, it says here, these are drawn full size. We've got uh, detailed uh, mechanical drawings for all of the parts in the engine. Uh, some of these I'm noting have actual multiple parts within one drawing assembly. Looks like here they have the uh, cylinder and both of the end caps. Uh, looks like the piston. Uh, standard that holds the piston. Uh, here looks like the base assembly. The sole plate. Uh, so Based on a recommendation I'd seen somewhere, I'm actually going to be going through and making Xerox copies of all, well not Xerox, making copies of all of these with my copier so that I don't uh, end up getting the actual originals all messed up while I'm working out here in the shop. My hands to get dirty and oily and I don't want to mess up the drawings. Plus I'll have a nice assembly logbook to keep track of. And I see they also have down here a nice uh, drilling and tapping guide for all of the threads in the kit. These are uh, mostly BA, some ME or model engineering uh, threads, and BSB, I believe is British Standard Brass, is used for tubing. So we'll be looking at that more when we get into looking at the tooling. So. Not a lot of detailed instructions, but I think there's enough here to work with. Got a nice little glossy print here about the history of the Stuart uh, Model Company. So says they started at the end of the 19th century. Uh, and they've got a picture here of their first, the number one that they, uh, was their first model they offered castings for. And their, uh, little card with their logo. It wasn't actually folded. Their guarantee uh, of the materials and uh, saying if there's any problems with any of the parts, they will actually uh, replace those. It's very nice. And, oh, my favorite thing here, packing peanuts. Uh, we'll do this quick and easy. They go on the floor and they'll get vacuumed up later. Uh, just the way I tend to keep the shop. Things are going to fall on the floor. That's what gravity does. And a broom and a vacuum will take care of it later. So let's don't want to damage anything. Oh. Oh. 
And what we've got here inside the box is a piece of cardboard with some, oh, I'm not sure what you call the stuff, the shrink plastic that goes on the top to hold things in place. I see that it's torn in uh, one side, but I didn't see that any parts had come out. So let's see what we've got inside of here. Oh, we've got, uh, looks like the cylinder casting. I see they've actually gone through and cut off the runners and left plenty there. There'll be some machining there. It's a bit ground off on the valve faces. Uh, looks like there's some sand or something in there. And sure enough, it probably doesn't show up on the camera, but there is still some casting sand. I'm going to want to make sure that I get that removed before I start trying to mill it. Got some brass pieces, I'm assuming uh, for the connecting rod and the valve connection. Uh, a rusty piece there, it must be steel or iron. Brass pieces. Some more small bits of brass. Ah, I suspect that's part of the valve. Cover for the valve assembly, I recognize that with the Stuart uh, S on it. A uh, small piece of rather dinged up uh, anodized aluminum, it feels like. Small brass casting, we'll see what that is. Ah, recognize that. There's the uh, base plate for it. Looks like a sole plate. The flywheel, it's got some rather sharp edges on it. Uh, flash on both the inside and the outside. Gonna have to clean that up uh, with a file before we put it on the lathe. I think that's the valve chest. This is interesting. Uh, see if I can get this in close. It is actually a bit of an offset in the when the two pieces of the mold were put together. They weren't quite lined up. I think by the time we've machined it, it's going to be fine. But. Uh, Want to get a good shot of this. This is what we're going to be starting with. There's where the uh, runner was cut off. Actually, it looks like it was broken off. Uh, it's a rather jagged edge there. Uh, bit of flash around the edge where it leaked through between the mold pieces. Uh, it'll be interesting to see this turned into a proper valve chest once we've done the machining. got the uh, standard that's going to hold the uh, piston up. Again, we've got the flashing. Uh, castings are looking pretty good. There's going to be a lot to remove though. This, I suspect, is going to be an interesting piece to mount for machining initially. Uh, doesn't appear to have any large flat surfaces, so that'll be interesting. We'll get to that. Small thing here with some black string. Oh, this must be the graphited yarn for packing at the base of the cylinder and at the bottom of the valve chest. Gaskets for round ones must be for the cylinder and for the valve chest. Uh, it's a uh, steel rod. That looks like it's going to be a crankshaft. Some smaller, I guess these are the stainless steel pins that are stock they were talking about. Another brass casting here and a small piece of brass. According to the uh, information on their website, this is a complete kit that contains everything that you're going to need for to assemble the model other than paint and uh, any tooling that's required. Here we've got a small box with a lot of like screws uh, and nuts uh, for the kit. They look I like these that they come with. This doesn't look like, let's see if I can open this. I'll probably have to be able to zoom later, but this is not your typical department uh, big box store, you know, screws. These look, actually look like miniature versions of proper uh, bolts uh, with the hex heads very nicely machined that you would actually see on a real steam engine. So I really appreciate the attention to detail that they've put in here. They've got all the little nuts. Again, none of the, these look like they were properly machined, probably turned on a screw machine, not just stamped out uh, 
from uh, a piece of sheet material. So very small, but make sure I don't lose any of those. Uh, but so far for the initial unboxing, uh, we'll go through when we go through the inventory and see if everything's there. But I am really impressed with the uh, quality of everything that I've seen. I put together the construction log I talked about uh, earlier. And in that, I basically took copies of the original instructions. I've got the uh, complete assembly drawing here in the front of the notebook. This is just a, uh, you know, school type uh, spiral notebook. Uh, I've got the complete parts list. And then I went through and set up one page for each. Uh, see if I can get this here on the screen. So you can see one page for each of the parts. So I've got a full page dedicated to each part. Uh, here's a second, for example, part number two. I've actually gone through as well while I was doing that and noting all of the, starting to note the tools that I was going to need. For example, this is calling that I've got some 8BA screws here. They're going to hold this part on. So I'm going to need some 8BA, 8BA taps. Uh, also going to, oh, here's a quarter by 32 TPI tap uh, hole that needs to be tapped. So I've noted that and went through and uh, got all of those listed so that I can go through and make sure I've got all the tools that I'm actually going to need, all the tooling. I didn't bother with drills because I've got obviously got a standard set of drills. Went through and created one page for each of the parts. And this is going to be a nice place as I'm going through and figuring out how to make the part. Uh, to make notes to myself uh, on dimensions that I need to keep track of. Is there any tooling that's required that I'm going to have to make? For example, there's going to be, a, I'm expecting a lot will be required for clamping various parts for machining operations. I've gone through and done that for every one of the machined parts uh, in the engine. I've got a second section here. I just put some little tab, tape tabs on the edge that I'm actually going to use as a build log just for my own record of what I did when. Uh, got another section for any required tooling. They had a real nice uh, table I'd seen at the beginning showing for each of the uh, thread sizes what the tapping and clearance drill sizes are. I noticed they have these in metric and decimal inches. I'm actually going to go through and add an additional set of columns to this to show what they are for uh, numbered or lettered drill sizes is appropriate because that's how they're set up in my index so I don't need to cross-reference each time. So this is basically the uh, notebook that I've set up for myself. The first step is, and this is what they recommended in the manual, is go through and make sure all the parts are there. To keep track of everything while I'm working on it, because I'm expecting this project is going to take a number of months, I got a storage box to keep all of the parts in. I just grabbed this at Home Depot. It's one of their store brand ones, uh, HDX. Uh, very inexpensive for a set of these. One of the things I like about it is unlike this, a lot of them will just have fixed uh, compartments. They actually have some removable dividers here so you can do larger areas when required. So I'm going to have the actual uh, notebook off screen, but we're going to go through this. And I am just going to go through the uh, list of parts in the order that they call for them here. So the first part is the box bed. Uh, that's right here. So check that off. The sole plate. And this will be nice because I'll actually get familiar with each of the parts and that'll be helpful as I'm going through. The better you know the parts, the easier it is to think about how you're going to do things and go through each of the steps. So I've got the sole plate here. The standard uh, that's going to go through and hold the uh, cylinder uh, and attach that to the sole plate. The cylinder itself, another casting. The valve chest we talked about earlier. The valve chest cover. I'll put that in with the valve chest. I'm keeping them separated so they don't get damaged, but for small parts, I don't mind combining things in a container. Ah, the flywheel, important part of the engine. It's that looked to be the biggest single piece. Uh, 
and the cylinder covers are cast iron but what they're noting is it's a 35 millimeter diameter by one and an eighth inch long piece so that's this piece of cast iron that they provided it's they're not actual individual castings uh, we're going to be making those out of a cast iron rod or a piece of cast iron bar uh, that'll fit there uh, the connecting rod the picture that appears to be here is a brass casting the eccentric strap, this will go through and hook from the eccentric and drive the valve mechanism. The slide valve itself, very small little piece. And the crosshead that connects from the bottom of the piston where the motion needs to be linear uh, to the connecting rod that will be swinging back and forth as the crankshaft rotates. Uh, the crankshaft, they note, is a combination, is a large piece of steel rod. That'll fit there. And the eccentric sheave is a smaller piece of uh, iron rod, or mild steel rod, rather. The crank webs are mild steel bar. The valve rod and the uh, piston rod and a crosshead pin will be made out of these pieces of stainless steel that we'd found earlier. Uh, there are various bits and pieces of brass. Uh, go through the uh, piston gland is uh, 7 eighths uh, diameter. Uh, and that'll be used for the piston and the gland, so that'll be out of uh, brass. The valve operating block is just a small little uh, piece of brass they've provided here. The fork end is a piece of quarter inch square brass. The valve rod gland is, they're calling this 2BA hex, I'm assuming this hex fits a 2BA wrench. So we've got that. And we have the crankshaft bearings, which are a casting that we had seen earlier. So we've got those. The cylinder lagging is this piece of aluminum. I'm not really happy with the quality of that. It got kind of dinged up. Anodizing isn't that great. I may end up remaking that uh, myself. The gland packing, which is the uh, graphite yarn that we had seen earlier. The cylinder cover gaskets and the valve cover gaskets, I'm not going to pull them out of their plastic bag. And I'm not going to do it on camera, but there is a whole uh, little box here, little kit with all of the studs and bolts and nuts and various screws that are required. And... We'll check those off camera, but assuming those all add up correctly, then it looks like we've got all of the pieces that are required and we've completed the inventory. And at this point, that's going to wrap up the first video. We've got all the parts that we need for the engine. We've got the Building a Vertical Steam Engine book, as well as a lot of resources that are available on the web. It's amazing what comes up if you just Google the Stuart 10V. And so we're going to be going through ahead. And the next uh, video, we'll start with construction of the tooling and uh, get the box bed machined. Uh, thanks a lot. I look forward to any comments that people have, any questions. I'll try and get back to those and answer everybody individually if I can. And looking forward to getting started with the next step of this project.